Hello and happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to The Rundown. I'm Sunny Galt. I'm a messenger with United Network News. UNN is the official news channel for CARE, which stands for the Center for Amity and Restoration of Earth. If you haven't heard of it before, it will soon be everywhere. I promise you that. And we discuss the real news, and that's not what most people are doing nowadays. Most people are reading some sort of script that was passed down multiple times and, you know, just kind of repeating, regurgitating the same information over and over again. Doesn't matter if you're in the mainstream media or, you know, the alternative media, doesn't matter. We don't fall into either of those camps, okay? We have a newscast that is released through our online distribution platform every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You can find us at unitednetwork.tv if you're interested in becoming a member and getting all that awesome content. We do this podcast because we want to tell you about some of the things that we're talking about on the news because the news is part of our membership platform and we realize not everyone you know, can pay for a subscription, but the information has to get out there. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but our world is changing. It is changing fast and... We want you guys to have the information. And so on this podcast, we talk about some of the stories that we cover on the newscast. So we do some local stuff through our field messengers. We've got some world and regional stories. And then we have what we call our world situation report, which I guarantee is information you have never heard anywhere else. And the reason you haven't heard it anywhere else is because we have access to the highest security clearance on the planet above governments. So I know that seems kind of maybe a lot to take in and a lot to believe, especially if you're brand new and you've never watched our news before, but that's the truth. And some of the information that we talk about on the news can be very surprising, especially the things in the World Situation Report, which is at the end of this podcast episode. But I encourage you to stick with us because as you listen, as you see things, I mean, this is a very interesting time we're living in now because you're going to start to see things happen in the real world, (laughs) you know, like, you know, the things that are being portrayed in the media that we're talking about on the news. So it's not just, oh, they said this, but I'm seeing a totally different thing in the media. No, like there's no way they can contain this anymore. And the word has to come out. We are becoming a light planet. And where there is light, there cannot be darkness. And let me tell you, there has been a ton of darkness on this planet for a very long time. And all of that is changing. So as we go through some of the stories on the news, if you're like, oh, I've never heard of that before. That's a little strange or (laughs) whatever's going through your head. I encourage you, stick with us. Do your own research, okay? Maybe search some of the terms, some of the, you know, places and groups and things that I say. Search for it online. Maybe not use Google. They censor pretty much everything. But pick a search engine of your choice and do a little bit of research. Stop believing people just because they have some interesting title or they work for the government or they have this high position in media because that means nothing. All of that is controlled. But when you think critically and you ask questions, that's when you become more enlightened. (laughs) That's when you really start to figure out what's happening on this planet. Okay, so that's what I encourage you to do. Ready to get started? This is the rundown for Friday, September 29th, 2023. All right, let's kick things off by talking about our field messenger reports in today's newscast. So our field messengers are incredible. They are people just like you. In fact, some of you listening may have submitted a field messenger report before, and you are really the heart and soul of what UNN is all about because you are reporting on what is happening in your community, and we think you are the best people to tell that story because you're impacted by it. You care about it. So much more than someone that would just fly in for the day and, you know, get out their little reporter microphone and kind of do their thing. No, this is your home. 
So we encourage you guys to tell your own stories. Send us your footage. We'll put it together, and we create what we call our field messenger reports. And if you want some more information on that, by the way, you can check out unitednetwork.news because at the top of that, which is our news website, which has articles and things like that, there is a section that I think says become a field messenger. And then under that has a ton of information. But today we're going to talk about three stories that we had on the news, three field messenger reports. And I'm going to go through these kind of quickly because honestly, all of these are visual stories. (laughs) So it doesn't make the most interesting content for an audio podcast. But still, I want to give you guys an idea of what was on the news today. So we have a story about a culinary art competition. And this was submitted by Monica. And she's in Romania. And I believe this competition took place in Constanta, Romania. Hopefully I'm saying that word right. But it was beautiful. You know, I mean, it's an art competition or culinary art, I should say. So it makes you really hungry when you watch the report. You want to like eat everything on the screen. But it was beautiful because it brings together different cultures and they're celebrating different traditions and you have food from all over the world. So thank you, Monica, if you're listening for that story. It was absolutely beautiful. Then we head on over to Albany, Oregon, which is in the U.S., for the Art and Air Festival. And Kim, who is just a cutie patootie, uh, she kind of takes us through the whole festival and just shows us how beautiful it is. They have this amazing live music and people are dancing and having a good time. And then they have these gorgeous hot air balloons that pretty much, I mean, I didn't see any video of them actually going into the sky. So I don't think that they lifted them off the ground, but they glowed. They had this amazing glow about them. And it just seemed like a really fun event. And then the last field messenger report that we have in this newscast, you know, it's just something simple. And, And field messenger reports can be that. But in this report, it was Leah and her husband, and they are out of Indiana in the U.S. And there was this random and and beautiful deer that just happened to come into their yard and they just grabbed video the deer came right up to them and they were allowed to pet them and you know sometimes we take this kind of stuff for granted but it is so beautiful when you're able to interact with nature on that level and really feel, you know, we talk a lot about being one with nature and this is an example of that and we're going to see more and more of this I don't know, camaraderie, I guess, between us and not just animals, but plants and all living things. And so it's just a really beautiful video. And so thank you again to all of our amazing field messengers out there. Your reports are incredible and we just love seeing it. We love seeing you guys on camera too. So if you want to watch any of these reports at the end of today's podcast, I am going to give you a link. If you guys are on Telegram, you can watch these complete reports for free. You don't have to be a member. You just click on the little links. I'll tell you more about that in just a bit. In our world and our regional news today, we've got three stories that I'm going to share with you. In this segment, I like to really point out some stories that stand out to me that we should be looking, maybe maybe looking at in a different light or something that points to you know, exposure, information coming out that, you know, wasn't released before, or maybe something that shows us, you know, more about this new world that we're building together. So the three stories I have, the first one is about Canada, and it's about mainstream media and the government trying to bail out mainstream media. And basically, it's not working. If you don't already know, mainstream media is a tool of the government to pretty much just spread its agenda. It is run by the CIA. That is true. <laughs> I mean, there there is no if, ands, or buts about it. That is how the setup has always been. They take their cues from the CIA. Have you ever wondered why there's so many like movies and TV shows about CIA and FBI and all? That's because they're all in bed together, (laughs) okay? And literally on these sets, especially film sets, you are going to have someone from the CIA telling them what they can and can't do because it is all programming for you, right? They want you to believe a certain agenda, you know, and, and that's what they've done. So this is just obvious 
you know, with the government getting involved with mainstream media. But what what the whole story is about is that mainstream media in Canada is falling apart because Canadians are losing their faith in them. And this is happening around the world. But according to this article that we were checking out, a third of journalism jobs have disappeared from Canada since 2010. A third. Now, of course, we had the pandemic in the middle of all of that, right? There were 470 local news operations that closed and 2,500 positions that were eliminated since COVID, right? So it is tough. You know, I worked in local news for a while and they are really reliant on advertising and you know how many small businesses went under. So I'm not completely surprised that this happened. I think it's sad because we do need local news. And a lot of people right now don't have access in Canada to local news because all this stuff has been happening. But here's the interesting thing. And, you know, they try to spin this and make it sound like they're doing a good thing, but it's not. It is literally media in bed with the government. But when these positions started being eliminated, when the government realized that their mouthpiece was going under, they hired 342 journalists and their wages were paid for by this $50 million initiative from the government, from the Canadian government to fund this. Now, I'm sorry, but the government shouldn't have nothing to do with hiring journalists. I mean, this is such a big conflict of interest. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let me let me give you a job. So, you you know, let me give you that extra bonus or whatever. So you don't say anything bad about me. I mean, come on. And even that, I mean, I think that was done at least a few years ago. That's not even helping. And there was a study that came out that said less than a third of Canadians have high trust in these institutions, meaning these media groups. And instead, they are turning to alternative news sources. You're going to see a lot more of this. You're going to see what is perceived as being these huge, huge media conglomerates. And they are going to start crumbling because it's not built on solid ground, which is the truth. There's just lie upon lie upon lie that cannot survive in this new world that we are creating together. So I just think it's interesting that these articles are starting to come out. More exposure is coming out, and we're just going to get more and more of that. Our second regional slash world news story is about microplastics in clouds. What does that sound like, guys? (laughs) Anybody heard of chemtrails, right? We have a lot of the people uh, that watch the news. They talk about chemtrails and, you know, what's going on in the sky above them. So I know our audience that watches the news is, is very familiar with this. Maybe if this is the first time that you found us, you haven't heard of chemtrails before. But basically, our air is poisoned, on so many different levels, and they fly these planes up in the sky, and you'll see like this plume of, it kind of looks like smoke, okay? And that's that's what they want you to believe, that it's just a plume of smoke that's following the jet or airplane or whatever it ends up being. But that's not the case. On board, and if you really look online, you'll be able to see some pictures and stuff, but there are like these horrible, <laughs> well, they're containers, basically. But the ingredients inside of this, I mean, I don't even know all the chemicals, but they are spraying all of this stuff into the air. Why are they doing this? Well, because it spreads disease. It gets us sick. It harms our soil. It harms our plants. It harms our animals. I mean, this is population control, but that's actually not what the article is about. I just wanted to give a little bit of a background for people who haven't heard of chemtrails before. So microplastics in the clouds. So there was a study that came out, and this is Japanese from Japan, okay? So there was a study that came out that found tiny particles in clouds, and and those particles have been found in humans and animals as well. 
And they went in this study and they took water samples from Mount Fuji and Mount Oyama and they found these microplastics. And what's interesting is based on their research here, these microplastics degrade upon exposure to ultraviolet radiation and then it releases these greenhouse gases. And the other interesting thing is it can be transported to distant locations. I mean, you think about clouds, especially on a windy day. Have you ever seen the clouds just like move super fast throughout the sky? I mean, this is carrying all of those horrible plastic particles all around our earth. In fact, they have a name for this. It's called plastic rainfall. I mean, doesn't that sound disgusting? <laughs> See, guys, when you were a kid, did you ever, like when it was raining, go outside, just like open your mouth and just let the water come in your mouth and, you know, kind of laugh about it or whatever? I used to think I was getting the most natural, best water, you know, possible just by opening my mouth. I had no idea of chemtrails and all the nasty stuff in our air. And then, it, you know, we're getting in, into our bodies and it's getting in our hair and on our clothing and then into our skin. Like, I mean, it's a mess. It's a mess. But more studies like this are coming out to show what many of us have known for a long time about these chemtrails and all this nasty stuff that we're literally breathing in and getting into our system in so many different ways. All right, our third story, we're going to end this more on a high note, guys. <laughs> and it's called India Trafficking Warriors. That's what we, we've called the story in our rundown. And it's about survivors, human trafficking survivors, in India, Nepal, and Brazil. There is a program, it's called the School for Justice Program, and I believe they said it started in 2017. So it's not a new program, but a lot of people haven't heard of this, right? So we're trying to educate people more about these, these topics that they're going to hear more and more about. And so what this program does is it supports the girls from India, Nepal, and Brazil, and it allows them to continue with their higher education and the fields that they end up going into, they become things like attorneys, paralegals, police officers, and even journalists. And get this, here's the really cool part. They end up going back and specializing in human trafficking cases. Now, that may not be for everyone. You know, I, I can only imagine the trauma that can come with being a survivor of human trafficking. But obviously, there are people that have experienced that and really want to help. And this program is allowing them to do that, which is incredible. In our world situation report today, we have some really interesting things going on. Uh, it's an incredible time to be alive. As we have said before, governments are crumbling. And usually what happens in the U.S. trickles down. Right. Well, maybe even not even trickling down. I think we're past the point of things trickling down. It is going to impact every single federal government on this planet. We have said that they are all out of money. They are trying so hard to steal money and to get money from extraterrestrials, which I know for some of you listening to this perhaps for the first time, that may sound crazy. Well, it is crazy, actually. But it was done that way in the past. The setup is a lot different than it used to be because the people at the top that were ruling this planet for many, many hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years have been taken out. They are no longer here. They are no longer in existence. It's like a, a pyramid. You know how they love their pyramids. So you start taking out, you take out the person at the top and then the next group and the next group and the next group. And so we are now at the bottom of this pyramid and we're dealing with governments that truly only took orders from whoever their higher up was in the past. They were never the top. It's funny, you know, we think like our, our governments of our country is, oh, that's who's running the country. Heck no. <laughs> I mean, those are the puppets. Those are the people that we're allowed to see. I mean, this idea of a shadow government and like even right now, people like people will be like, oh, well, you know, Obama's really running Biden. Are you kidding me? Obama was a puppet, too. Obama ain't running anything <laughs> except maybe running scared right now. He has his own problems. 
So we're in this position right now where governments around the world are literally broke. We are seeing this in the U.S. big time right now because we have a pending shutdown, government shutdown going on right now. And if Congress doesn't, well, this is the mainstream media narrative that I'm going about to, you know, tell you about. <laughs> if uh, if Democrats and Republicans don't get on the same page, then there's going to be a government shutdown starting 12 a.m. Sunday, U.S. time. That has nothing to do with why the government is shutting down. The government will shut down, and I actually believe the government will never reopen because we have tried. To work with governments in the past. CARE, the Center for Amity and Restoration of Earth. We have tried to work with them in the past. We have offered them money if they are willing to join the restoration plan and stop trying to cause wars and famine and send whatever disease they want to send through all of our electronics and stuff. If they would cut out all those shenanigans and actually get on board with the restoration of planet Earth, we can work together. You know that song, why can't we be friends? That's kind of how I feel. Like, why can't we be friends? Because they are Luciferian, baby-eating, demonic creatures. (laughs) I mean, honestly, I don't know what else to say. Or they're following people that are doing that. And, you know, and really, they're just about the money. Whatever it is. They're not listening to us. And so we made the call, and you guys may have heard the episode, we made the call a few weeks back saying, we're done working with governments. You guys are going to crash and burn. And meanwhile, we're going to rebuild this planet without you. So we are in the final stages of this actually happening. Because again, what happens in the U.S. is going to happen elsewhere. And the U.S. government is about to close its doors. Like, And not just for a week and not because, you know, you know, Republicans and Democrats just have to get along. No, 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 no. There is so much else happening behind the scenes. It has nothing to do with McCarthy or any of those other characters or the whatever Freedom Caucus or, you know, they're blaming Republicans. It doesn't matter. There are much bigger fish to fry here. And governments around the world are broke. So where are they going to get the money from? They could pass something, but where's the money coming from? It doesn't just grow on trees, last time I checked. So there's a lot of there's a lot of panic at the disco. You guys know that band, Panic at the Disco? A lot of panic going on behind the scenes right now. Everyone needs money. No one wants to work with care to restore the planet. You know, that's not fun for them. They want to go about all the other nefarious stuff that they've been doing for a very long time. So in our last report, we talked about how the Rothschilds were trying to do some last ditch efforts, trying to, you know, stir up some things, get contracts for people. They want to start World War III. They want to do all this kind of stuff. And they're promising so many people money and it's not happening. Like there's no money to give and Word is getting out. There are documents that are being circulated to explain all this to people. Education is happening behind the scenes to more and more people, and they're starting to see the truth. There was a deadline today at 3 p.m. Eastern for these people to get paid and all these contracts that they all signed, and that's not going to happen either. So what are all these operatives and military people going to do when they realize that they've just been fed a ton of lies and wasted a ton of time, too, because this has been ongoing forever, you know, what are they going to do? We talk about that on the World Situation Report. We also talk about how there is some mutiny going on at the Pentagon. And remember General Milley? Yeah, he's singing like a canary right now. He's ratting out everybody because he was another person promised a very wealthy retirement. And now he found out he's not getting anything. And so he's ratting everybody out. This whole house of cards is coming tumbling down. Here's Kimberly Gogan with the Office of the Guardian explaining in today's World Situation Report what's going on with the government. On the government side of things, uh, they are um, in a full, full-on full panic. 
there's a lot of chatter, especially in the United States, about, you know, can we get that money back? Can we can we deposit it back? Can we work together with her? Uh, the Democrats are blaming McCarthy. But all of you know, I know they are, you know how they do it, and they want to impeach him. They're going to come back next week on the 2nd and start his impeachment process. This is what they're talking about. But it's really not McCarthy's fault. It's a lot of people's fault, but Mm -hmm. it's not McCarthy's fault. Uh, If anybody that is a known figure in government could be blamed for the removal of that, it would have been Schumer. We told you about the Schumer story a few weeks back and what he was up to. Yeah. 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 So... If anybody had involvement in tearing it down, you know, it was him. Uh, But he was doing so on behalf of the Chinese deep state. So take your pick. Mm -hmm. You know, they look like Americans. You know, they talk like Americans, but they're not Americans. It just depends on who's buttering their bread, so to speak. And they thought, you know, they were going to take $2 trillion and pocket it. And that didn't work out, did it? No, it did not. So the education process continued on Wednesday, as I had talked about on Wednesday's news, and it's spreading like wildfire amongst all of the operatives worldwide. So it's not just Americans. Uh, You're talking about the political operatives. You're talking about uh, financial operatives. uh, And it's spreading all over the place. So these people have now gotten real information that they can actually verify, and there's thousands of them. There's not just one or two. There's thousands. They're in the Middle East. They're everywhere. And even to to this day, or to this moment, I should say, they are still educating more and more in droves. Mm -hmm. Now, this happened at a perfect time of year. I don't know how... You know, that all works out. It just happens that way sometimes that it just started, you know, the real information and the truthful information started two days before everybody's due to arrive in their respective zone locations worldwide to collect money and payments from Rothschild. Isn't that funny how that works Uh out? Yeah. So now, as they arrive in these respective towns, this one is no exception, they all get sat down and everybody gets an education. Here's the verification. Here's the files. She's right. You know, and it's not about being right. It's about saying, look, you know, I don't want anybody to be taken advantage of, you know, and, and I... <clears throat> You know, if I bought a product or something like that, I didn't like it and it was bad, I would tell you about it. You know, I would tell you, Sonny, about it as my friend. If you ask me about should you buy this widget, whatever it is. And it's the same thing that goes with these guys. So they're traveling around the world doing their thing and going to these locations. And it's just not right. You know, they're setting up arms deals for World War Three and not getting paid. And then there's going to be. No payment. You know, they set it all up, though, you know, to be fair. They they put in a lot of time, work, and effort to make these contracts happen, you know, on their end, so that the second the money drops, they're ready to go. Um, <clears throat> so it's been a really great learning process for them, uh, and it's given a lot of what I guess you would call street cred, That's what we would call it here in the United States. So like a lot of credibility to us. Mm -hmm. Um, We're seeing it trickle through Washington, D.C. We're seeing it trickle through everywhere, you know, and they can try to blame politically speaking, you know, whoever they want to. But all the political operatives are in their respective locations looking for money, too. So that being said, the monetary deadline has been set for 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today. They like 3 p.m. a lot. (laughs) <laughs> so I am making popcorn and I plan to sit back and watch the show on the key intelligence and military system because as word gets out that they were all taken, number of things are happening. Number one, a lot of the operatives that were involved at the highest levels have taken a step back into the background because The people that I call ghosts or the people that go bump in the night, so to speak, you know, your operatives and whatnot, have all agreed collectively that enough talk. And if it doesn't happen by three o'clock today, they all agreed collectively to take action. 
Do you know what that means? What is take action? What does that mean? Well, I cannot confirm or deny what I think that means, but I do believe that we will probably end up with a lot less order members and in those that follow the order, mm. uh, you know, in their scams and schemes. We also have a, a mutiny going on in the Pentagon right now. Okay. So you have generals you see, generals you don't see, uh, and you have uh, some that still are believing in Rothschild's fairy tales, and you have some that are not. But a little exciting and zippy twist has happened. So we all know General Milley is retiring, and um, he was also promised by the Rothschilds a what you call a golden parachute, which means you retire with your pockets full, lots of money, millions of dollars. And he knows now he is not going to get that golden parachute. So he, in, in exchange for immunity from prosecution, he is singing like a canary to all his colleagues. He is he is mad. He is angry. He is not well, as I understand it, and he is telling all there is to tell because he's got nothing to lose. Oh, mm, I see. And so there's a laundry list of people that are, you know, now on the chopping block that are working for other countries uh, and have continued to work for people in other countries, uh, be it, you know, the Chinese or be it the... Um, the British, you know, sector of the Rothschilds or, you know, whoever it is. In addition to that, we also have some of the generals that are loyalists to the order uh, of one or another, Black Sun or whoever's remaining around there. Uh, and they are running around to operative land is what I call these different places, zones in the world. And they are demanding that they still take orders from them and that it's going to go back to the way it was. None of this crap anymore. You know, you'll do exactly what we say and all of this stuff. And, and pretty much everybody is saying no. Wow. They've Good. been to Cheyenne mountain. They've been to here. Uh, they've been um, uh, to Colorado Springs. They've, they've been on a campaign uh, flying around in their little plane and, and telling everybody what they're going to do, but nobody's listening. And basically they're telling them the same thing. They always tell these people is, well, no, no money, no work. Work mm -hmm. is money. Money is work. Time is money. Mm -hmm. And, so everybody's just sitting back now. It's kind of like almost somewhat dead silent out there. Like you can feel it's the calm before the storm because come later on this afternoon, a lot of these people are going to retaliate. Yeah. Uh, is what it looks like. Now, there is no more days ending in Y that they can promise money to governments anymore. That means the operatives who run governments worldwide are pretty much sure that they're going to have to try to find something somewhere else. Now, well, you know, we've talked about those terms and conditions because mm -hmm. something in somewhere is here. You know, all mm -hmm. roads lead to, you know, to us. So, <clears throat> So it'll be interesting uh, turn of events. It's going to be a very interesting weekend to see if they're finally fed up. Oh, let's hope that they are finally fed up enough to want to leave all of that idiocracy behind. I cannot imagine continuing to do work and work and work on promises and promises and nothing coming of it. You know, I mean, at some point this has to end and... We think now's the time. So it'll be really interesting to see over the weekend what happens, like Kim said. Should be a really interesting report coming up on Monday for the World Situation Report. You know, because we really could use their help. You know, I mean, they're going to be on a short leash if they're going to be working with CARE because they've done, you know, some not great stuff in the past. But there is benefit to working with them on something as opposed to starting from scratch. But their organizations and 
how they had everything set up before. That's what Kim was talking about with the terms and conditions. And we've talked about that before. And I've played some sound bites of that in the past. But it's not just, oh, we'll just come in and give you money and, you know, maybe you'll change a couple things here and there. No, complete overhaul. Complete overhaul. So this is part of the new world. It's taking down the structures that no longer work for us as humanity. Things that are hindering us as humanity from moving forward and and. People out there, you know, signing contracts, trying to start World War III, that kind of falls in that category, right? Don't you agree? (laughs) So let's see. Let's see what happens over the weekend and into Monday. And if you can catch Monday's report, um, you know, I'll definitely be doing a podcast episode on that if Kim is on the news. So just so you know, if I haven't said this recently, if Kim is on the news and we end up doing a world situation report, then that's when I do one of these podcast episodes. So fingers crossed, unless she's way too busy on Monday, we'll get more of an update. So there you go. That is today's episode. Remember, keep asking questions. Keep thinking critically. Do a little bit of research on some of the stuff that we talked about today. And if this is starting to make sense and you're like, oh, geez, that's why I'm feeling like some, we're on the verge of something happening That's why, you know, my whole bones, my spirit, my every, you know, I just feel something's about to happen. This is why you feel that. And if you want other people, if you want to help other people that might be like right on the edge going, what's going on? What's what's happening here? Then please share this episode with someone you really care about because we want to help them too. We want to get as much information out there as possible. And again, if you want more great content, like you want to go back and you're like, I'm just found out about the world situation report. And Kimberly Gogan. If you want to go back and watch previous newscasts and world situation reports, you can do that through unitednetwork.tv. It is membership based, so you do have to sign up, but uh, it's really inexpensive, actually, and totally worth it. To get this kind of content that nobody else is talking about is incredible. And you not only get the UNN newscasts, you get our world situation reports. We've got original series. We've got health and wellness videos. So check that out. If you want to connect with us, the best way to do that is through Telegram because we will be banned anywhere else that we actually try to post this content. But we do pretty well on Telegram. So we have the Care General Updates channel. Again, that stands for Center for Amity and Restoration of Earth. So that's a lot of restoration information, and sometimes Kim posts messages and things like that. That is a channel, okay? So you can only comment under a post. And then we have the United Network News Channel. So if you want links to our newscasts or those field messenger reports I was telling you about earlier, where you can get the full, full, you know, field messenger report without being a member, you can join that Telegram and it'll... It'll give you the direct link so you can check that out. And then if you're like, hey, I want to become a field messenger, I want to tell people about what's happening in my neck of the woods, then I encourage you to join a Telegram group. It's called UNN Field Messengers. Just go ahead and and search for it. And we have people there that can help you with your story so you can ask questions and all that good stuff. All right. Thanks for checking out today's episode. I know it was a shorter one today, but that's because we've got the build up. What's going to happen on Monday? This is The Rundown, and I'm Sunny Galt for United Network News, signing off.